I love a good dog fight battle, and I have a feeling you do too. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and it's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on this Friday, and we're gonna do it with a dog fight. The Nexus 4, the Droid Razor HD. Let's see which one comes out on top, but before we get started, special thanks to our buds at Best Buy. They give us devices like this. Honestly, we just give to you on the site at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you walk into the store, you'll walk out working. Best Buy will help you make sure you're set up and ready to go with their walkout working program. They'll get all that junk set up for you, so when you walk out the door, you can play with your phone on the weekend and not worry. Let's figure it out. Dogfight, Nexus 4, stock Android, Droid Razor HD with a bigger battery, and 4G LTE. Which one's going to come out on top? Let's take a look in the full dogfight. You know, it seems like every day we're testing high-end Android phones and we're comparing them in dogfight battles here at Phone Dog. But honestly, there are a ton of great options out there to choose from, so these kind of dogfights are awesome to do. One of those is the Google Nexus 4, very popular device, hard to get your hands on, back in stock now in the Google Play Store. What's so great about it? The price point. It starts at $299.99 for the 8 gigabyte model, $349 for the 16 gigabyte model, and that is without a contract, which makes this a really nice option for those people that are upgrading and don't want to spend too much money, don't want to pay full retail. It's available at least on AT&T and T-Mobile in the United States with an unlocked SIM card slot that will support HSPA+. Plus. So 21 megabits per second on AT&T, 42 megabits per second on T-Mobile in markets that support those theoretical peak speeds. That said, specs, 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU, 4.7 inch IPS HD display here, 8 megapixel camera, 1080p HD recording. You've got HSPA Plus, like I said, 2,100 milliamp hour, non-removable battery here. Beautiful build quality, though. This really is kind of the iPhone of the Android world. If you're looking for that beautiful Android device and you haven't found it just yet, this could be a nice option for you. And again, it's unlocked, so you can use it on AT&T or T-Mobile. This one is a carrier lock device. It's a Motorola Droid Razor HD available on Verizon for $199.99, packing a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 CPU, 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD recording. You've got... Other goodies such as a 2,530 milliamp hour non-removable battery in the back. Uh, like I said, 4.7 inch HD display here as well, 720p, and then it's got Android 4.1. It actually launched with Android 4.0, but now has since been updated to Android 4.1 on Verizon Wireless. It does have Motorola's user interface. That said, out of all of the user interfaces, this is a vanilla version of Android 4.2. This is a uh, kind of skinned, if you will, to an extent version of Android 4.1. That said... It's a nice version, and it's probably the most stock version you're going to find between Motorola, LG, Samsung, and HTC. Let's talk about some of the menu here. And you can obviously see the menu area with the start button, or with the uh, applications drawer and all the shortcuts down here. Very similar on the Motorola side as it is on stock Android. But if you're an Android purist, you love that stock look and feel. Project Butter, you want the you know unrestricted Project Butter version without any sort of carrier or manufacturer skin, that is. This is going to be the device for you. Let's talk quickly about build quality, then we'll jump into the applications. Like I said, beautiful build quality here. The Nexus 4, really, in my opinion, and I keep saying this, but it's really true, it is the iPhone of the Android world just when it comes to build quality. If you're looking for that high-end device with glass on the back, beautiful glass front, and nice sides that I keep almost dropping out of my hands if you're watching this, uh, it's really a nice device. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, power button on the side, micro USB charging port at the bottom, volume rocker over on the left side with your SIM card slot, and then battery is back in the back, and it's non-removable. It's 2,100 milliamp hours. Over here, Motorola design, very typical. You've got, on this side, micro SIM card slot. You've got your HDMI port, your micro USB charging port. You've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Then you've got power button over here. You've got your volume rocker, and I'm going to grab my key so you can actually see. I've got a SIM card ejector tool on my key ring, and we'll see what comes under this so I can show you on camera. What you get. So you got the micro SD card slot, and then you've got your micro SIM card slot. And obviously, because I pulled that out, I'm going to need to uh, to restart it. I just feel more comfortable restarting it. But anyway, Android 4.1. Let's see what comes out of the box on this one. You've got Google stuff. You've got the typical Google integration here. Chrome, which is nice. Chrome out of the box. No other browser other than Chrome. Google Currents. Google Plus. You've got all the typical Google applications. YouTube, Play, the Play Store, Wallet, all that good stuff. And again, an unrestricted Android experience here with your widgets over on the side. And one thing I really like about Android 4.1, and I haven't highlighted this enough in videos, I love the quick access from the lock screen. So take a look here, for example, we'll turn it off and back on. You want quick access to your calendar. You want quick access to your clock, your email. You have access to do that. So I have Google Plus right here. My buddy Phil apparently posted something. Calendar email, and then I can add something else. So if I want messaging, for example, all of this can be done from the lock screen without having to actually go into the device itself. That's a demo number, so I can swipe back and forth. 
and easily access, you know what, how are you today? I'm gonna go ahead and respond to that and it opens up that text message where I can respond right away. So we'll say, well, hello there, how are you today? We'll say, the quick brown fox, woo, quick brown fox is great, is great. Android 4.2 keyboard also include, includes a swipe-like functionality. Say includes a swipe three times fast on camera. It's surprisingly hard. And then, of course, portrait and landscape, nice and fast. you got a quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU powering this device, so it's pretty fast all around. Of course, recent applications as well, and because it's running Android 4.2.1, you've got Google Now integration. Simply press the home button, swipe up, and you could say, well, actually, I need to configure it first, but you can say something like, What's the weather like in Dallas? And that's actually pretty cold, so let's see what it says. Yes, I am in, let's do this. Google, what's the weather like in Dallas? Let's try it again. Google, what's the weather like in Dallas? And then there it is, and it should be able to say, I wish it would give me the actual weather in Dallas. <laughs> give me actual weather in Dallas. And it's bringing up the web results, but it should bring up the cards uh, usually, or something like, uh, tell me the traffic in Dallas. And then there's the live Dallas traffic map, but it should bring up the cards, not quite sure why it's not doing that. And then of course you have Google Now integration over here as well, because of Android 4.1 and Verizon's 4G LTE network is still loading up. Now out of the box over here, you do get some Verizon pre-installed applications, accessories, apps, uh, Amazon stuff, still have the Google integration. What I like about Motorola is there's no, uh, much like Samsung or HTC, there's no manufacturer browser. You've got Chrome out of the box. There's no Motorola internet browser. It's Chrome. You really get, again, a stock, almost a stock Android look and feel here, save for a few small things. Some things are actually pretty useful. I like this little favorites area up here where I can bring in my quick applications that I use on a regular basis. I'll add and remove, you know, whatever. If these are the, my four applications. They're my favorites now, and I can swipe between apps, widgets, and then, of course, the Google Play Store bookmark is right up there as well as it is on stock Android. So you can really see some similarities here between stock Android and its most pure version and then Android running atop or underneath, rather, Motorola's user interface. You do get some nice Motorola widgets, though. Circles is one of my favorites. You do get this where you can access weather. You can add cities. I can take a look at the time, and I can see my battery percentage meter from the actual widget. That said, I wish on both stock Android and on Motorola's UI, I wish there were a physical battery percentage indicator, but that's all I'm going to say about that because I say that in every video. Drive Smart's actually a pretty useful application we'll talk about in part two, but you've got some pretty decent Motorola widgets. Let's take a look, for example, at, let's do... Let's find one that we like. Let's say bookmarks, for example. And let's scroll over to an available home screen. And let's bring bookmarks out onto that home screen. So I can bring it out with Chrome, and not that this is an actual uh, Motorola widget, but just to show you what it's like. And I can bring out my bookmarks, and once I get bookmarks, they'll show up right there. And I have easy access to those. I haven't actually used the bookmarks. So speaking of browser, let's take a look. You've got 4G LTE over on the Droid Razor HD. You've got HSPA Plus over here. We'll load up PhoneDog pretty quickly just so you can take a look. PhoneDog.com. And we're not going to sign in right now. We'll load up PhoneDog over here. Verizon's 4G LTE is nice and fast, but it is saturated. So if you're in a market where it's been around for a while, you're going to notice the speeds are a little bit slower. That said, PhoneDog.com. Jeez. Louise, PhoneDog.com. There we go. Over here. 4.7 inch displays on both of these devices. So size wise, very similar. This one's a little bit shorter and fatter. This one's a little bit longer and narrower, at least in the hand, when it comes to overall size. The usual stuff here. Portrait landscape transitions nice and fast. I find that the quad core processor works incredibly well over here on the Nexus 4. And a couple of things I like notifications bar, which we'll talk about actually in just a second. I probably should do the tests over on the Droid Razor HD as well. And you can see a little bit slower on the portrait landscape transition, but overall browser experience is pretty decent. You'll also notice stock Android, on-screen buttons, back home and recent applications. Motorola, on-screen buttons, back home and recent applications. So again, with Motorola being acquired by Google, you're seeing more and more of a stock look and feel here, which is really, really nice in a lot of ways. So we'll take a look at the notifications bar. Kind of similar in some ways here. You can see Motorola's user interface to an extent, but really, again, looking like stock Google with the way the notifications are displayed. What I like about Android 4.2, though, you'll notice that you get a little additional thing up here, and this button has been subject, uh, substituted rather for an X over on the Motorola. But what I do like, take a look at this. I can use both my fingers, bring it down, 
and it's not supposed to do that. Let's try this. There we go. I can bring over this kind of quickly used uh, settings menu, if you will, where I've got my Google Plus profile, brightness, settings, Wi-Fi off, T-Mobile, my battery percentage indicator, airplane mode, Bluetooth off, and I can flip back and forth between those. So I can either do it that way, or I can use two fingers and bring it down just like that, and it's supposed to, there we go, bring it down quickly and easily so I can access those features that matter most to me. Over here, I can still do that, but I have to go through settings like I have since Android 4.0. Keep it locked on phonedog.com. We'll talk more about speed tests, all kinds of camera settings, and other things that make these devices different in part two. Stay tuned.